Hello everybody, Laura here again with another helpful video. This one is about hiatal hernias. I have had one for many years. I have struggled with it for many years. It has gotten worse before it got better. And I am still treating that uh, with various home remedies. But I have finally found many things that have helped me. And I am hoping that this can help you as well if you have a hiatal hernia. I'm sure you know what a hiatal hernia is if you've been drawn to this video. If not, you can research that online. But if you don't know what it is, you should probably go to a primary care physician to get checked out to make sure that is what you have. And there are different kinds of hiatal hernias. There's sliding, there's rolling, and there's other kinds that I won't get into. But you need to find out what kind you have and find out also how large it is because sometimes these just, they need repair via surgery. But I'm wanting to talk to you about things you can do at home, things you can do with a low budget, with you know very little money. Maybe you don't want surgery right now, you can't afford it, and you wanna try these uh, natural remedies to help first. So the first thing is that when you get up in the morning, and it, it does help to have a consistent schedule, by the way. So you, you just have to get used to a whole different lifestyle that is kind of catering to that hernia. That area needs a lot of love, a lot of care. So when you get up in the morning, you don't want to just jump out of bed. You don't want to get up like doing a sit up to get up. You want to get up by rolling over to a side, left or right and then using your hand to kind of help you push up off the bed or sofa or whatever you are laying on, even if it's on the floor, if you're doing some exercise or stretches, uh, that would be a good way to get up so that you're not putting any pressure on the diaphragm there, which can create a lot of discomfort and bring that hernia back up. So one of the first things you wanna do after you get up is you want to drink at least 16 ounces of warm water. And what I do is I usually drink the first eight ounces. So I have an eight ounce glass and I'll drink the first glass, just water, nothing in it. And then the second eight ounce glass, I will put something called Lobelia in it. And you can get this Lobelia extract from a, from a <clears throat> A health food store, you can get it online. Basically, it's an herbal relaxant <clears throat> that you can put in the water. And it will help to relax your breathing muscles, your diaphragm, all these muscles in your abdomen. So that when you breathe, you know, it's, it's a more relaxed breath. And that's something I forgot to mention is that before you even get up out of bed, so before you even drink that water, you want to get some either magnesium oil or some good CBD oil with no THC, just CBD oil. And you want to put some on your hands. You want to gently massage that area and massage it down. You can do that whole area. So a hernia is usually right here, fatal hernia. So it's up in this area where it's very tender. It's very tight. You have the uh, acid reflux coming up, you have a bulge here possibly. So all the symptoms seem to radiate from this area. So you wanna put that oil, either magnesium or CBD, or you can combine the two and rub them on your palms, get it nice and warm and massage that area going down. You can do the whole, the whole abdomen across. So you can, I mean, it's just great to massage that whole area because your diaphragm is a dome shaped, uh, dome shaped thing that goes across here so you want that to relax you want the muscles there to relax and it helps to massage them all just to be balanced on both sides and it's just a nice loving feeling to be massaging yourself taking that time that you need to massage that area to get it nice and relaxed once you do that then I want you to lay flat on your back and I want you to do some belly breaths. 
And what that means is take your hands, put them on your stomach, and breathe in. So you want your belly to expand out, not up here, not chest breaths, but nice full belly breaths that would come from down here at your belly. You want to breathe in through your nose. and then out through your mouth, and the belly will go down when you exhale, of course. And really focus on getting that belly to expand up and then down when you exhale. And do that as long as you feel you want to, as long as you have the time. And you can even work in a little mini meditation there if you want, listen to some relaxing music or nature sounds, whatever you want, and just start your day like that. And even while you're doing that, just send love to that area. Pray for God to help you. Ask for God to help. Ask for divine help and guidance to just put a lot of loving energy into your hands. And massage that area lovingly, kindly, and just do that through the breathing, and get up the way I showed you by just rolling on, onto your side, using your hands for support. Drinking the water, you don't want to chug it, but you know you want to drink it, and then after you're done with at least 16 ounces, I would say that's probably a good amount of water to start with to get your digestion to wake up, get yourself uh, hydrated, to kind of move the bowels, because uh, if you particularly add some lemon to that warm water, if you can tolerate it. And if you do, try to use a straw. I have these metal straws so that the lemon juice doesn't hit my teeth because it can make your teeth very sensitive as it's quite acidic until you drink it. Then it changes to alkaline. But it's very acidic in your mouth, so you might want to use, I use metal straws just because plastic is really bad for the environment. So get yourself some metal straws. They're also easy to reuse. You can clean them. There's a little brush. You can get these on Amazon. They're very cheap. So use a nice metal straw to drink the lemon water. And then, um, yeah, usually I, if I do lemon water, I'll do that before the lobelia water so that that works on getting my digestion working. And that will also usually make me uh, want to go to the bathroom soon after. So usually I'll do the lemon water, eight ounces, wait about, you know, 10, 15 minutes before you drink the lobelia water. If you don't have lobelia yet, just drink eight ounces of plain water and then just drink that with the straw without. And then what you want to do is what's called heel drops. So you can pull up a towel or some kind of cloth and put it under your heels so that you're not bouncing on the floor too much and causing a racket because at least here, you know, the, the floor, it's very loud when I do heel drops. So what you're doing is you're working with gravity to help pull down that stomach from that there's a sphincter, uh, the ELS, the esophag esophageal, L-E-S, sorry, <laughs> the lower esophageal sphincter, which is um, having the part of the stomach bulge up through it. And the diaphragm is usually having spasms as well. So you're trying to get that to come down. So that is the main focus of everything that you do throughout your day is to be aware of your posture, be aware of the tension you're holding here, be aware of you know what you're eating, how you're eating. That's something else I'll talk about. But do those heel drops. You can do as many as you want that you'll you'll feel that going down. You'll feel that stomach being pushed down by gravity and going back to a somewhat normal place again. It might take a little while, but you can do this as long as you feel comfortable. If you ever feel any pain, you just want to back off and stop that and maybe try again later. But this is not meant to hurt. It's not meant to be uncomfortable. It's meant to feel good and help you. So do those heel drops. 
Okay, do that for, I usually do it for a minute, a minute or, or two, a little bit less, depending on how I feel. If I don't feel like I need to do that many, I just do you know, 10, 20, I'll do a minute, but it's up to you. So do those heel drops. And then another thing you can do is um, there's some other workouts you can do, like lay flat on the floor, put a yoga mat there, lay flat on the floor with your head on the floor and do head tilts. So you just, 10 of those, and you just want to tilt your head up. You don't want to tilt anything, anything above that, I mean, anything below that, <laughs> depending on how you're looking at yourself when you're laying down, but no more than 10. And you want to do those. And then there's something called wall angels. You can look them up, but it's basically you're standing your back against the wall and your legs are at a shoulder width distance apart and you are raising your hands up and then bringing them back down along the wall, using the wall for support to keep your posture in alignment. And um, that's another thing you, you can do too, is you, you know, even if you're standing, sitting, whatever you're doing, you can raise your hands up above your head and just turn a little bit to the right. Put your hernias on this side, right? So you just want to turn a little bit to that side. You feel that nice stretch in there. That's what you need. That's the kind of stuff you need. And you can do the other side too if you want, but I would, you know, if you have any pain or discomfort, I would back off and not do that side until you feel like you can. But focus on, you know, stretching this side where your hernia is. Because a lot of times there's a lot of tension in there from that hernia. You're overcompensating for weakened muscles and uh, the pain and discomfort. So your body tends to hunch over a little bit to that side. So that causes a lot of muscular tension and that attributes to more symptoms with a hernia. Um, there's also something that I haven't done. Um, well, there's two things. One of them is find a chiropractor that works with hernias and helps to pull that down. So they will do some manipulation in their office to bring that down. They will also align your spine, your neck, because everything is connected. Everything is, I mean, you have muscles in your back that come around. Uh, you have, everything is so interconnected, I can't even tell you. So find a chiropractor, or you can find someone who has studied a Barrel Institute, an instructor of that. They can do visceral manipulation. So that's muscular manipulation of that area where they can help relax it, bring it down to where it's supposed to be. Um, there's also things you can do at home. So if you don't have anyone like that or you don't have the money, you can get um, a tennis ball and put it there and just gently glide it down. I would put maybe a little oil on that or something and just glide it down. It'll feel good. So any pain or discomfort again, back off. Don't do it if it's too painful or you're pushing too hard. And you don't want to push on anything in the middle here, because this is the cycloid process, and that's a bone, and that can easily break if you push too hard on it. Not to mention it's very painful. So you want to go a little bit to your left. So maybe that way, so you know where the hernia is, and that's where you want to take that ball, or even your hands, you could take your hands and just down. So you're, you're, you're doing like a scooping motion a little bit like that. And when you get down to the bottom, when you get down here, you want to ease off very gently. You don't want to just pull your hands off. But everything to be done gently, slowly, and listening to your body. So if your body's sending you pain signals, discomfort, you back off, you stop, and just try it again later, or change the way you're doing it because you're not you're doing something incorrect, so you're pressing the wrong area, or you're pressing too hard, or maybe you've just eaten something. You don't want to do this after you eat. You want to make sure you've digested your food, so wait at least an hour or two before you do that, I would say. So that's something else you can do. Um, and the diaphragmatic breaths, that's something you can do throughout your day. So you can do that when you're standing, sitting. You can do that when you're laying down. Um, and I would pay attention to your posture as well when you're sitting. 
So something you can do is you can take a towel, roll it up, and you can put it on the lower part of your back because a lot of times you can put it like right, right here at your back. And that will help to force you to sit straight up because usually hiatal hernia sufferers, they slouch a lot. Um, they, they bend over a lot. They slouch a lot. And um, so all those things, all those proper things about posture, about lifting things, you want to pay attention to that. You don't want to do bending over and picking up heavy things. You want to bend at the knees, pick it up, not pick up things that are too heavy for your hernia because you will feel it. If it's too much, your, your body will tell you. So paying attention to posture is huge, a huge one. And doing those diaphragmatic breaths, those belly breaths throughout the day will help to strengthen your diaphragm because that's something that is weak when you have a hernia. It could be an attributing factor. There's many, many reasons for this hiatal hernia. So if that's the case, it doesn't hurt to do these breaths as it will just strengthen your diaphragm more and be beneficial, even if it's not a, a weak diaphragm in your case. So all these things are beneficial, whether you have a hernia or not. So it's, it's very good for your body to get those diaphragmatic breaths so that it's more oxygenated, so that it has that oxygen to work with. And then, um, so the rolled towel, that's something you can use when you're sitting and watching TV. You can use it when you're sitting, you know, on the bus, sitting in your car, driving, sitting at work, you know, whatever you're doing where you're sitting a lot. Use that towel to kind of remind you to sit straight up. And there are braces you can buy on Amazon that help to kind of support your back so that you're not like this or you're not like this, you know, that kind of remind you to be straight, be aligned with your posture. And, uh, yeah, so focus on that. And also sleeping. You want to make sure that your head or the bed is elevated and you will feel it. You will feel it if it's high enough for you. For me, I have to sleep almost sitting completely up sometimes, depending on how my hernia is that, that night. But if I've eaten some things that I shouldn't, my hernia will tell me I will get really bad acid reflux and pain. So then I have to sleep higher up. So it depends on how you went about your day. Have you been picking things up wrong? Have you had bad posture? Have you been, not been doing your breathing? You know, have you eaten the wrong things? Have you drunk the wrong things? The hernia will tell you, <laughs> as I have learned. So you want to elevate your the head of your bed, even slightly if that's all you need. But, you know, try different angles and you will find one that's good for you. And it might change every night. So, um, and you don't want to lay on your stomach. That's terrible for, unless you're doing um, a certain yoga pose, which I'll get into later. But there's a certain yoga pose that you can do, which helps to stretch out that area. Uh, I won't go into that now, but you can find them online too, like good yoga poses for hiatal hernia, and you'll find cobra pose and such. So um, the rolled towel, let's see, yeah, you can do the self-manipulation with a tennis ball or your hands. So that's something you can do. Um, you can get the chiropractor to work with you. Um, and I would say that if you're doing any workouts like yoga, Pilates, any kind of workout routine designed for your hernia, that's what you want to focus on. You want to do workouts designed for your hernia because going to a gym and just doing regular workouts with a hernia can make it worse. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you hold that down first before you've done even you know, the diaphragmatic breath, um, you know, any kind of yoga, Pilates, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, weights. Uh, so you want to make sure that that's down first, because if you're strengthening that area, all the muscles that will help to keep that down, you don't want this up here. You don't want the stomach up here because then you're just going to make more constriction there. You want to make sure it's down, keep it down. You want to focus on getting your digestion to go down, downwards. And you want to focus on the diaphragmatic breath, proper breathing, good posture. And diet is a main thing. One thing that gives a lot of people with hernia a problem is gluten. 
And I know a lot of people, they, they don't believe that it might be gluten. They don't want to cut that out. They eat a lot of pasta and breads. And um, a lot of people wonder, why now? Why do we have all this problem with gluten now? Well, um, it's in too much stuff. So we've overeaten gluten to the point that now we just can't really digest it. And the breads and pastas we eat nowadays are so processed. I mean, back in the olden days, they used to make their own breads. And a lot of that stuff they put in the breads would break down the gluten so that the body could better digest it. So if you ever wanted to find out what gluten is, you can look that up and see pictures of it. It looks basically like a big blob of Elmer's glue. It's been kind of solidified a bit. And yeah, it's it doesn't look happy for your digestion. <laughs> And it creates a, a very thick mess in your digestive tract. And even with without a hernia, it can cause a lot of problems for people. So I would say, think about what you're eating. Mindful eating is very helpful. And what that means is that you're paying attention to everything you are consuming, drinking, eating, snacking on, whatever it is. And what you're not eating too, because it's important when you have a hernia to make sure you're getting enough nutrients through your day and eating the right things for you. So getting enough, uh, you know, calories, getting enough protein, getting enough uh, fiber. Fiber is very important for a hernia. I would say that people with a hernia need a little more fiber than most people because you need that to kind of help process all the food and get it to go down. Because usually people with a hernia, they have digestive stagnation and it's very hard for them to go to the bathroom regularly and such, um, and drink a lot of water with all of that fiber. You don't want to eat a lot of salads and greens and not have enough water because that can make you constipated. And that's the other thing with a hernia. You need more water throughout your day. So concentrate on drinking more water. Um, I don't know what a good number is for you, but you can probably look that up, find out how much water you should drink for your age or you know, who you are. You know, so everybody needs a different amount. And what else can I tell you? I would say after doing the, uh, the water in the morning to wait, wait at least like a half an hour to an hour. I would say an hour is ideal. Wait until you eat a breakfast. And when you're eating, you want to pay attention to the size, the portion of what you're eating. So you don't want to have a big breakfast. Like I see people eating like, eggs, bacon, toast, pancakes. That is too much food in general. I mean, never mind having a hernia. But when you have a hernia, you want to keep your portions small. You want to chew your food thoroughly. You want to pay attention to things that are giving you a bad reaction. So if there's something you're eating, and that's why I like to um, do an elimination of things. Like The best way to do that is to eat one thing at a time. Chew it, swallow it, make sure you have enough water to wash it down because a lot of times food gets stuck here. We don't want that to happen either because that can cause spasms and those are very uncomfortable. So you want to drink enough water um, and then wait a bit. Your body will tell you right away, usually, if something is not right for your stomach. So you, it will usually you know, make you have uh, bloating or pain. It will give you heartburn, indigestion, um, it just won't feel good in some way. Like some way what you just ate will not feel happy at all. So then you want to, you know, eliminate that for now. It doesn't mean you'll forever have to eliminate it from your diet, but for now your digestion needs a break from that because it's compromised with this hernia. So you want to back off of the things that give you any kind of discomfort or pain or symptoms that are not pleasant. And stick to things that make you feel good, things that are good for your digestion. So a good breakfast uh, could be, um, you know, a little bit of oatmeal, uh, whatever it is that you, you eat. Um, I used to do smoothies. And then I changed them up because I was drinking bananas, <laughs> like too many. And it was just making my blood sugar do roller coaster rides all day. And that was not a good feeling. So you want to make sure that you're not spiking that too much. 
So I would I would stick to like um, protein powders. Uh, like a I have a vegan protein powder that I use. It's a, a meal replacement shake, and it has it has all the fiber. It has vitamins and minerals. It has greens in it. Um, and I, I even add, sometimes I'll, make, I'll add a greens powder to it and uh, some kind of collagen. So you can get marine collagen if you don't want to use animal collagen. So uh, you can add some collagen to that because collagen is extremely healing for your gut. And uh, that could be a nice breakfast for you. You don't want to skip breakfast. And you don't want to replace it with coffee or or other things like this that are just really going to set off your digestion right from the start. I mean, you want to really be mindful of what you're putting in your body. So mindful eating. Take your time. Make sure you have enough water. Pay attention to how you feel. Your posture while you're eating is key. And sometimes when I'm eating, I'll do like a mini stretch here. It's kind of just help things go down in the right place because when things get stuck it's like you have two stomachs you have that one that's above and then the one below so the one that's been pushed above i have a sliding hiatal hernia so if food gets stuck up here somewhere that's when you'll have the spasms the pain the heartburn all that stuff that you don't want so mindful eating take your time chew your food enough uh, I think I looked it up. The ideal amount is 20 chews per bite. Take smaller bites. You don't have to eat as much as most portions show. Especially with a hernia, you you can really limit your portion size to like um, one of these shakes is enough. So it's just like an 8-ounce glass of protein shake. If I want like a handful of berries to go with that or maybe some nuts and seeds, chew those properly and, you know, don't eat too many of them. Pay attention to how they make you feel because a lot of people are allergic to certain nuts and seeds. And you don't want to stick to the same nuts and seeds all the time. You want to change it up and rotate those because that, if you're eating too many of the same thing, can create intolerances, sensitivities, and allergies. So change it up. Your body needs also different nutrients, so you want to balance your nutrients, and different nuts and seeds have different nutrients. So, um, yeah, try to change up your diet. You don't want to have the same thing every morning either. So, if it's a protein shake one morning, maybe the next morning you can have some oatmeal, um, or you, you can have some, like a, sometimes I'll have a tofu scramble, and I'll put greens in there, I just make myself a little stir fry in the morning. Because when I get up in the morning, um, I usually want something savory. I'm not really into sweets, like uh, fruits and stuff in the morning. But my body tends to crave savory foods, so the tofu scramble is really good. Um, and hey, you know what? Sometimes I've even had leftovers from dinner the night before for breakfast. As long as it was light enough, you know, if it wasn't too heavy, I would have that. And then, yeah, so... That's how I would start the day. And then, um, you know, throughout the day, I would say do little mini breathwork exercises. Do Take some time throughout your day when you can to sit in a chair or lay down and just do a little bit of breath work. Do those belly breaths. Do a little meditation. You know, really tune into yourself. Love yourself. You know, pray to God, do a God meditation. And you can massage that area again if you want. Do some stretches. Do a hernia workout. You know, design, a yoga or Pilates workout designed specifically for a hernia, hiatal hernia. You want to focus on the hiatal hernia because there's different kinds. There's inguinal and uh, so on. So you want to focus on that area. And there's even Qigong movements you can do that can help with the hiatal hernia, to help pull it down. You can look those up online as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I've missed. Mindful eating, posture, nutrition, breath work, medications. Yeah, medications can sometimes make a hernia worse. So you want to make sure 
that you are not dealing with side effects from medications that might be exacerbating your hernia symptoms. Um, and if they are, you can maybe talk to your doctor about that and switch to something that would not cause those reactions. Um, I would pay attention to things like spicy foods is a trigger, especially for me. Uh, greasy foods, um, alcohol, caffeine, especially if I've had too much. Eating too much and not eating at all can also make the hernia worse. Um, and not chewing properly is definitely a big one. Not drinking enough water because when food gets stuck there, that's torture. And um, going to bed too early after eating. So after you're done eating dinner, you want to wait at least two to three hours before you go to sleep. And going to sleep, um, a lot of people have a lot of insomnia with a hernia because you're getting woken up at all hours of the night with all kinds of aches and pains and heartburn and you know, spasms and bathroom trouble and everything else. So you want to have a nightly routine that you do for those two to three hours before you actually lay down and go to bed that are designed to help you relax and you can end the day with another massage like with that CBD or magnesium oil. Uh, you can do relaxing things like sip some chamomile tea, um, take a nice magnesium bath, those magnesium uh, bath salts you can get, Epsom salts. And uh, magnesium is excellent for hernia and for your body in general. So you can even drink magnesium. But I would say the, the most absorbable way to get it is magnesium oil, especially for hernia, because a lot of times people with a hernia have compromised digestion. And that's something else to work on. So there are different uh, supplements that you can take to help heal your gut. And I will get into that in, in another video. And if you wish to work with me on that issue you have, uh, I will help you find all the different things that you can try to fix your gut, heal it, so that you can improve that digestion. And that will also then improve your absorption of all the minerals and vitamins and nutrients that you are getting in your, in your diet. Because a lot of times people with high hernia suffer from deficiencies and uh, you know, like anemia was a big one for me until I worked on healing my gut more so that I can absorb. And what kind of iron are you taking? So that's another thing I can talk about in another video or if, if you're working with me. So when you're working with me, I target specifically what you want to fix and I customize my coaching for you. So it's not like a template that I'm using with a lot of people. I want to know what your issues are, what you want to heal. And it's not just on a physical level. So a lot of times with a hernia, this is a solar plexus area. So I also do, I also work with the chakras. I work with the ethereal body. I work with the spiritual side, the emotional. And a lot of times there's traumas that are affecting this area that most of the time you're suppressing. You don't even realize it. So it's causing a manifestation physically of this hiatal hernia. So working with the spiritual aspect and working through the traumas and the mind, the emotions, as well as the physical. So this is just outside in. We also want to tackle inside out. And that's my approach in everything I do uh, in my coaching practice. So if you work with me, um, it's not just going to be masking symptoms because you can mask symptoms with medication. Uh, you can mask symptoms also with all these other things I've been talking about. But if you're not doing the inside work as well, you're just kind of working from the outside in. Meanwhile, the core inside is not being worked on. So you want to ta tackle it from both sides so that you can meet in the middle and really heal it at the root with love and kindness, God's love. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to feel, you know, energized throughout your day. God wants you to enjoy what you're eating and the experiences in life. God wants you to experience pleasure and, you know, joy and love and 
gratitude. Start your day with gratitude. Just start there. If you have nowhere else to start, you don't know what to do, start each morning with gratitude. That you're able to take these breaths. Because there's some people that can't. There's some people that are on breathing machines right now. You know, some people that have compromised breathing. Just enjoying taking a breath and living each moment to moment. Micro moments where you can look for gratitude in everything you do. Just that little shift in your consciousness will create the big change. And you will feel that in your body as well. But that's something, that's a huge thing that we can work on as well, if you decide to work with me. So if you would like to work with me, please do contact me. I have contact details in the description below. And uh, I look forward to it. And believe me, when we work together, there will be better lighting than this. <laughs> I am working on improving the aesthetics. But right now, I feel like the messages are more important than the aesthetics. So I needed to get these videos out there now. So I've waited long enough to make this channel. And here it finally is. And I just want to give you this info so you can start right now and get on a path of healing, ultimate healing with absolute pure love from God. And loving yourself via that God's love. God's love, loving yourself, to me are synonymous. So that's something I can help you with too, if you need help with that. Because you are worth it. You are loved. I appreciate you. Much love to you. Bye-bye.